Good afternoon and welcome to our afternoon session. One of the wonderful things about working here at Old Parliament House is there are a number of galleries which feature political cartoons. And as I walk around the building and see the visitors, they all stop, they have a look, and invariably they have a chuckle if some of them just laugh out loud and continue on to the next cartoon. In Australia, we, I think, grant cartoonists far more latitude in what they can say and how they can say it than perhaps anyone else. So I was really pleased when I spoke to my old friend, uh, Jeff Pryor, that uh, would he come and today he and I might just talk a little about what it's like to be a political cartoonist and particularly in the era, 2006, uh, 1996 to 2007. And Jeff, we've called this session, well, we've referred to court jesters. Uh, is that a fair description of a cartoonist, a court jester? I'm not altogether sure about that, Tom. Uh, it sort of plays down the political side of what I do and did for 30 years for the Canberra Times, uh, and that was the serious side. Um, you know, was I somebody who, who did a daily joke or was I a political commentator? And, uh, and I decided I was a political commentator and, um, and it was hard work. Uh, but at the same time, uh, a jester in history uh, is the only person uh, in the court who can tell the king he's not wearing anything. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the other side of it. And you'd had some time drawing John Howard before 1996. When he became Prime Minister, did you feel that you either needed to draw him differently or you'd draw him the same way or there'd be just perhaps a little bit of emphasis that you'd bring? Well, I think I can s safely say this, but I did notice over the years that uh, John, uh, John's hairline receded. And I can say that because mine did at a very early age. And, and uh, watching um, uh, p uh, politicians and political leaders over the years uh, closely um, and observing them, uh, and I used to do it in Parliament, in the old Parliament House all here, in, in the House of Reps, uh, I used to notice that uh, they were people who aged before you arrived, you know, it um, must be a hell of a job, you, uh, you, you, you wake early, you, you're often in bed late, you're off, often exhausted, uh, but with uh, Prime Minister Howard, uh, I think I'd settled on a caricature, on a shape fairly early, but the challenge was um, to be able to uh, draw the figure from all angles and still have it uh, recognisable for the reader and also uh, to have uh, a whole series of emotions that I needed to be able to put on the face to, to get the right sentiment across. So for Bob Hawke it was probably the hair, for Paul Keating it was probably the nose, for Mr Howard it might have been the lip? Perhaps, yes, yes. Uh, well for Hawkey uh, it was a whole lot of things, it wasn't only the hair, it was the eyebrows, the, uh, the nose, he had about or oh, half a dozen features you could hang a caricature on. Uh, Paul Keating was a bit harder, uh, he was a bit younger um, to begin with. Uh, but uh, no, I must say that I felt quite comfortable with, uh, with Prime Minister Howard. Um, I remember Fraser I had difficulty with because I was just starting out with him and um, fixing on a caricature, which is an evolving process. It, it happens over time as you become more comfortable. You start off with a photograph, which you then throw away and then go from the memory of the photograph and then uh, the memory of the memory until you've got this figure. And uh, I used to draw Fraser tall and skinny and I remember talking to Patrick Cook one day and he said, no, 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 that's not right. He says he's a bloody farmer from the Western Districts. He has enormous hams and he has enormous hands. He's a big bugger, you know, he's solid. And I had another look and I said, yes, he's right. And that changed my view of uh, that caricature thereafter. And the cartoon behind us um, features Peter Costello. Was he a little more tricky? He was. Um, he'd come onto the scene a little bit later for me, but it's a cartoon. I Yes, I like drawing that one. In fact, I look at it now and it's sort of reminiscent a bit of Kevin Rudd. I used to think, uh, you know, how did Kevin Rudd arrive on the scene? And I thought he might have uh, sort of descended on a green beam from a spacecraft or something because I knew nothing of his background. But a cartoon like that, yes, I, um, uh, I, that was one I enjoyed drawing very much. And 
when do you decide in a week, if you're doing a Saturday cartoon, when do you decide, look, I've got to commit to this issue or this particular point that I'm wanting to make? When do you commit and then what's the creative process? Do you just draw an outline and then fill in the detail? Well, this is uh, the Saturday paper that I'm drawing for now. Um, my deadline is Wednesday. Uh, uh, hopefully I have it done by then. Uh, and then I'm starting to think about it on Thursday, but I don't actually commit until much later uh, in, in the following week. Because you see, the problem is you're drawing uh, on a, a Wednesday for a, a Saturday publication. Uh, the, the cartoon that you sweat over, the comment that you, you labour over, um, may be quite irrelevant by Saturday. So uh, it, it's a complicated business. You have to work with one foot in the news cycle and the other one out of the news cycle. So you've got to be able to somehow maintain distance. In fact, it's only one drawing. I find it uh, just as stressful um, and just as difficult as doing uh, seven a week, which I used to do for the Canberra Times. You've produced thousands of cartoons over the year. We featured a few of them here in the yes. conference book to let people see that uh, the range of your skills and doing different people. Was it harder in the Howard period to do some of the Democrats, I'm wondering? I mean, Meg Lees, I can pick up her caricature. I would imagine that uh, Senator Stott Despoia might have been a little more difficult, or am I not yes. reading that right? No, exactly right, uh, because you didn't get to draw them so often. Um, I used to worry about balance. Uh, some people here might might find that uh, unbelievable, but worry was a concern. Uh, and I remember talking to my editor about it, but I think it was during one of the election campaigns, and he said, don't worry about it. It'll all sort itself out over time. And uh, my philosophy then became uh, that um, the government were the appropriate target because the government were the actors. Uh, the government was there to act on our behalf as constitutionally empowered to do so. And uh, the government of the day was the initiator and everybody else, the opposition, uh, the media and the public, uh, we are reactors. And so we respond to what's being done. And I've had cause to go back through all my work. I donated all my work to the National Library and I've been annotating it a project that's taken a, a long time, which I've just finished, uh, I noticed that, yes, I did give them uh, as hard a time as I could, uh, regardless of what side of the political fence they were on. And you must have, you must have had over 40 years some politicians ringing you up and either complaining about what you've done or threatening you and what you might do in the future, surely? Uh, I did have some uh, phone calls from hurt individuals, um, which I took note of. Uh, I never got threatened with a, a legal suit. Um, and uh, to that extent, I was self-censoring uh, working for the paper. I was always conscious uh, that we were a, you know, a family paper read by everybody. Um, but having said that, uh, I love bad taste. <laughs> I'm a great fan of Monty Python and so forth and, and anything I could get into the paper which I thought was reasonable, I would. But, but looking back over those thousands of cartoons, are there one or two you think, I might have overdid it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, I rarely left work uh, in the evening after having finished, um, you know, um, nine or ten in the evening, rarely left work feeling, ah, oh, I nailed it. That was a good one. Um, uh, I was always critical of my own work and uh, I think most cartoonists are. Well, they should be because once you start to think that um, you nail every drawing you do and they're all pretty good, I think it's time to uh, get a taxi driver's licence, you know, that will be downhill. But um, I... Um, there were some that I... Yes, they did pain me a bit. I wished I hadn't drawn them. Uh, I just thought that they were unfair. I, I, I'll just recount one. I think it was Barry Jones. And uh, <clears throat> Barry Jones is a, a fellow I've got a heap of respect for. Um, he, um, I think it was a time he was having difficulty, he was Minister for Science and having difficulty seemingly to get anything through Cabinet. Uh, and he was a, sort of a hopeless politician at that level, I perceived. I was always looking at these things from a distance. And I think it was at the time of the movie um, uh, uh, The Rain Man. Remember the, uh, the 
Tom Cruise and his, um, his idiot savant brother and, you know, how he protects him, gets him through life. And I think I, I had um, Barry Jones as the, the idiot savant full of facts and with John Button as his smart brother. And, um, and I think, uh, I can't remember what the comment what was, but I called it the systemic uh, precipitation man because that was the sort of language that, that, that Barry used. And, uh, and, and afterwards I felt, no, that was a bit hurtful. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have done that. Hmm. And in the community of cartoonists in Australia, and there's not political cartoonists, there's not a great many of you, um, do you actually self-centre each other? Um, no, the, the, the uh, relationships we had with each other were usually formed when we met. I think there was a black and white um, artist society going for a while and uh, we were a group of people who, who more or less we were like old soldiers. We used to talk about war stories, share our war stories, which are usually complaints about editors and whatnot. And we all uh, sort of did the same sort of combat that was uh, shared the, the same trench with the daily deadline and this tyrant of a deadline and uh, it was something that we all suffered with. But, um, but one thing cartoonists uh, don't do, it should never do, is um, pinch other ideas. And uh, we don't. Because um, that would be plagiarism, wouldn't it? Well, if you're creative enough, you can you can disguise the fact, but it, it's uh, more if you've got to live with that. If you can't think of your own ideas, then uh, give it away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeff, look, we've enjoyed your work for 40 years. We wish you well for however many more you continue to write, and thank you, thank Tom. you for giving us the insight to politics that sometimes only those with a quick pen <laughs> can bring to us. Would you please thank Jeff for being with us today? Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Tom.